Hi, I'm Terry Courier, and I'm the owner of Music Millennium, a record store in Portland, Oregon, as well as president of the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. My first experience with the Rounders, 1972-1973, I was a 17-year-old kid hanging outside the door of the White Eagle Saloon while the Holy Moto Rounders were playing inside. The Rounders were, were definitely one of those bands that were unique and stayed with me my entire life. I later on had a record label called Burnside Records. I had numerous conversations with Peter Stanfall for a number of years there trying to put out an album by him. It never materialized, but I had a lot of great conversations with Peter for a couple of years. I think I first met Weber must have been in the late 80s. A friend of mine, Don Younger, who owned the Horse Brass Pub here in town, he was a friend of Weber's. We actually went out, had lunch a couple of times together, and I found Weber to be a really intelligent character, really interactive in conversations, definitely a unique individual. She sits home and chats in all the right places sees friends on the screen she tags all their faces takes videos photos and gifs of her cat when he scratches she gives him a shove she's a quarantine ager in love her boyfriend is home he texts and he's ready he photos his ring, says he wants to go steady. She kisses the screen and then sanitizes. She washes her hands in her gloves. She's a quarantine ager in love. Hi, I'm Teddy Dean. I played reeds, clarinet, sax, and flute with the uh, Holy Modal Rounders for uh, eight years or so. Uh, I joined the band in 1971. I was working with Marty Mull at the time, uh, the comic, and he introduced me to Michael Hurley and Peter Stamphill. Played my first gig with the Rounders uh, in 1971, right after Dave joined the band. And uh, also in that year, they were looking for a new drummer, so uh, I called up Roger, who I'd worked with, and he drove down to Nantucket in his van, uh, and while he was driving down, a seagull hit his window. I think it was an omen, but he kept on going anyway and ended up with the band. So then uh, there was seven people in the band, Steve Weber and Peter Stamfell and Robin Romaley, Richard Tyler, uh, me, Dave, and Roger. Uh, we got a big bus big old uh, Greyhound bus and uh, headed for the West Coast in the summer of 72 after we got back from a European tour. And uh, Peter elected to stay in New York. So there was six of us and that was essentially the West Coast Rounders. And we got to, uh, we got to Portland in, uh, I think, October of, 72 and uh, went pretty much straight to the White Eagle where we found uh, the Fly-By-Night Jazz Band and that's where I met uh, Turtle and, uh, and Billy and Johnny Ward and John Domingo and so on. I actually uh, did a uh, the first record with the Fly-By-Night Jazz Band. I think maybe their only record. Not sure. Anyway, that's a little bit of history.
And he, he actually wrote this song. Uh, he didn't. He wrote the last verse. He, the last verse is like he used to run the streets of uh, Manhattan for 10, 14 days at a time, you know, on, on amphetamines. And he would just crash where he, you know, where he ended up when he ran out of gas and just. And on East 4th Street, uh, Towards uh, Avenue A there, there was uh, a block that was the Hells Angels block, and uh, he ran out of gas there and just crashed in the gutter, and uh, this Hells Angel comes over and goes, poof, poof, kicks him, and he goes, hey, Weber, get up, man. You're gonna freeze down there. So the last uh, verse is about that. Well, I walked down Central, turned up Main, ha ha. Lord, Lord, and Lord. I'm looking for the gypsy to sell me cocaine. How could I ever get so low? The gypsy's window was filled with smoke. Uh -huh. Lord, Lord, and Lord. Written in the smoke said no more coke. How could air get so and weebs whatever back in those days he was the fool killer because <laughs> he would shoot massive amounts of uh, amphetamines massive and uh, just stay up for you know a week or two and these kids from the suburbs would come and uh, follow him around and watch him play guitar for like three days straight you know and they go wow that's how you do it. Okay. 
So they would shoot up amphetamines and die, you know, so <laughs> called them the, uh, called them the fool killer back then. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. There is a price to pay for the knowledge. Yes. Dear honey, don't you cry no more. Okay. Run down from the edge. Oh no, honey, don't you cry no more Because I think I see a good man Headed straight for your back door Oh no, honey, don't you cry no more because I think I see you good man Headed straight for your back door Oh no I got more time than I can use Just for sitting on your back porch Singing these lonesome blues Oh no Honey, come and let me in Just to show you where I've been Oh no Honey, don't you cry no more Because I think I see a good man Headed straight for your back door Oh no Honey, don't you cry no more Headed straight for your back door not written by a dead guy that I know of. Well, probably. Gotta be dead by now. Yeah. 
more than likely.